Hello class, we're going to try to help you with the final assignment in Module 6 in which you have to write a Python program. We're at Coding Grounds at TutorialsPoint.com, as you can see up here, and we've entered the Coding Ground for Python 3. You'll see two windows side by side. You write your program in the left-hand window, and you'll get the output of your program over here in the so-called Result window. Now, any Python program is a series of statements. In this particular case, we have some statements of the type that you need for your assignment. We have some input and output statements. And uh, we, uh, we're going to first of all enter the name. Okay, we're going to ask for the name of the user when this program runs. And we're going to store that in a variable called name. We use the input function to get input from the keyboard. Now, normally, you would type uh, a response to this statement at the keyboard of your computer if you were running Python on your own computer. But we're running Python here at Coding Ground, and it works a little differently. They actually have a, a Linux or Unix-based computer that they're using here. So we have to handle that input just a little bit differently, but we'll cover that in a minute. So this statement here is going to get the user's name, whatever we type in or whatever we specify, and it'll be stored in this variable name. Then there's going to be a blank line printed, and then we're going to have the program say hello to whatever name was entered. Then we're going to ask for the user to enter his or her age. Well, that requires two functions. The, it does require the input function, but the entire input function has to be embedded inside of an, an int function in this particular case, because I want to get an integer age. Sometimes you'll want to have a float, a number with decimal places, and you would use the float function here instead of int. But whatever we enter is going to be stored in this variable called age. You've got two main types of variables, strings, which are for um, non-numeric data, things like names, addresses, place of birth, that sort of thing. And then you've got your numeric types, uh, like ages or uh, price of an item, that sort of thing. Those are numbers, of course. Different types of input for each of those variable types. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to print uh, one line using both variables. Here we've got variable, string, variable, string. So what we're hoping is that we'll print that out. Now, actually, I've already run this because if you type this in and hit execute to run it, this is what's going to happen to you. It's not going to run right. It's going to give you an error message. It's going to identify that there's a problem here and the error message is end of file. In other words, it did not find anything to enter. And that is, again, because we're running this on a Linux or Unix-based computer uh, remotely. It's not our own computer that we're working on here. So here's what you have to do. You have to anticipate the data types that have to be entered when your program runs. Well, we want a string for the name. And then the next input is a number for the age. So anticipating that, we have to enter those here up in STEIN. That's the uh, name for uh, the standard name for the keyboard in, in most programming languages. So I'm going to click on that. And here's where we enter the name. I'm going to enter Guido. He's the man who started Python. I don't know how old he is, but he's much older than 23. I think he's in his 50s. But I'm going to put 23 in there. Now, if I go back to the program, when we run it, Guido is going to be stored in this variable. 23 is going to be stored in this variable. And I think when I run it now, it should run OK. Almost. Almost OK. It does run without errors. But look at this line here. What happened was we had a carriage return here, or new line, as it's sometimes called, after the O of Guido, so that uh, the is 23 year old came out on the next line. Well, we don't want that. So what we can do is we can we can fix the name up a little bit. What we can do, let's see, I could do that right about here, I suppose. And I could say name equals name dot R strip. And because this is on a Linux based computer, I'm going to put a backslash R. Now, normally you would use a backslash n on a Windows computer, but on the uh, Linux 
or Unix computer, a backslash R stands for a return, a carriage return. Carriage return is from the old days of typewriters when you would have to press carriage return at the end of the line to start a new line on a typewriter. Okay, let's see if that works better. There it is. Hope that helps. You need to do something similar.